Hi, welcome back to Stoichiometry Clarified, hopefully. All right, this is part two where we're going to go over the Unit 7 Day 2 example problems. We're going to revisit those problems and show you how to solve them using sort of the breakdown method that we looked at earlier today. So summary of process. Remember, um, for these problems, the first thing you're going to do is um, identify your given and find. And then, then once you've done that, You'll start by converting from the amount of given to moles of given using the mole map. Now remember, you would skip this step if your given is in moles. The second step is to convert from the moles of given to your moles of fine using mole ratios. Now for all of these problems, the mole ratios are going to come from the subscripts in the chemical formula. But remember, later on, we're going to see examples where the mole ratios come from the coefficients in a balanced chemical equation. The last step is to convert from moles of fine to the amount of fine using, once again, the mole map. Now, you remember, you can again skip this step if your find is in moles. So if they're asking you to find your value in moles, you would stop here. You don't need to go on to the last step. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the example problems from Unit 7, Day 2. So let's get started with the first example problem. It says a cup of water has 15 moles of oxygen atoms. How many moles of hydrogen atoms does this cup of water have? Now, before we start tackling the, the problem using that process that we saw previously, we're going to first look at the visual aid to get a sense of exactly what this question is asking us to do. So I want you to picture it. Let's say you have a cup of water and you were able to take out all the oxygen atoms in that cup of water. And when you counted it up, you determined that that was equivalent to 15 moles of oxygen atoms. Now, let's say someone came along and asked you, well, how many hydrogen atoms does it have? So instead of going back and counting the hydrogen atoms, you can use the stoichiometry process to help you solve that. So let's go ahead and identify our given and find. We're given in this problem 15 moles of oxygen atoms. And we're asked to find the number of um, the, the, the moles, sorry, of hydrogen atoms. So let's see where we're at in the process. We're, our given is in moles and our find is in moles. So we really need to do just that middle step there, going from moles of given to moles of fine. So our plan is to go from moles of oxygen to moles of hydrogen. Now to do that, we're going to use the mole ratio based on the chemical formula, H2O. And we can see in the chemical formula of H2O that in water, there's one oxygen atom to two hydrogen atoms, which is equivalent to saying that one mole of oxygen atom, um, that there's one mole of oxygen atoms and two moles of hydrogen atom, if you have a mole of water. So our mole ratio is going to be one mole of oxygen is equivalent to two moles of hydrogen. This is what we're going to use to convert. Now let's go ahead and do our conversion. So remember with these process, we use dimensional analysis. We take our given and we write it over one, 15 moles of oxygen over one. And then we use the mole ratio as our conversion factor fraction. So to set this up, because I'm starting, I'm given moles of oxygen and I want to get rid of that. I want to cancel it out. That means in the denominator, the, the moles of oxygen must be the denominator. So the part of this that goes in the denominator is the moles of oxygen, the one mole of oxygen. So the moles of oxygen can cancel out. And then what's left, the two moles of hydrogen goes on top. And then I can go ahead and uh, do the math for this problem. Okay, I just had to correct that slight error there. So that should be moles of hydrogen. So the answer to this problem is 30 moles of hydrogen. Let's go on now to example two. So example two says how many grams of oxygen are in 0.522 moles of water? So let's go to our visual aid so we can get a sense of what's happening here conceptually. So let's say you have a container. The stack has 0.522 moles of water. And let's say you were able to remove all of the oxygen atoms in that water, and then you put those oxygen atoms on a scale to weigh it. What would the mass of the oxygen be? That's what it's essentially asking us to do. So let's go ahead and identify our given and find here in this problem. We're given 0.522 moles of water, and we're asked to find grams of oxygen. So since we're given our our given is in moles, we don't need to do that first step of going from amount of given to moles of given. So we can go ahead and um, cross that out. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is start with our moles of water, our moles of our given, and convert it to our moles of our find, our oxygen atoms. And for that, of course, we'll use mole ratios. So whenever you're trying to go from one substance to another through moles, you use your mole ratios. 
And if you look at the chemical formula, one mole of water has one mole of oxygen, just like one molecule of water has one oxygen atom. Therefore, one mole of water will have one mole of oxygen atoms. So that's the conversion factor we use for that. The next step is to go from moles of oxygen to mass of oxygen. And, and again, in this case, when you're converting um, between different amounts of the same substance, so moles of oxygen, mass of oxygen, we use a mole map. And if we were to look on our mole map, if you're going from moles to mass, you would use the molar mass. And to get this value, you would go to your periodic table. So if you look up the average atomic mass of oxygen on the periodic table, you see it's 16 grams. That means that one mole of oxygen is equivalent to 16 grams. So let's go ahead and look at our math here. So starting with moles of water to moles of oxygen using our mole ratios. I take my given 0.522 moles of water, put it over one to make it into a fraction. And then in the second fraction, which is, comes from my conversion factor, I put my moles of water on the bottom so that they cancel out and my moles of oxygen on top so I can keep that. And I get 0.522 moles of oxygen. And that should actually make sense to you. You probably can do this mentally, like using some mental math. If you have one mole of water, you have one mole of oxygen. Likewise, if you have 0.522 moles of water, you have 0.522 moles of oxygen. All right, now that we have our moles of oxygen, we're going to convert from moles of oxygen to mass of oxygen, again, using our molar mass for our conversion factor. So we're going to take our 0.522 moles of oxygen, put it over 1, and then we're going to multiply it by the conversion factor fraction. The 1 mole of oxygen goes on the bottom, and then the 16 grams of oxygen goes on the top. That way my moles of oxygen cancel out, and I'm left with grams of oxygen. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to look at example three. So example three says a 50 milliliter tank of CO2 at STP, standard temperature and pressure, has how many moles of oxygen? So before we tackle the problem, once again, we'll look at our visual aid. So let's say you have this 50 milliliter tank of CO2 and you were able to count all of the um, oxygen atoms in this CO2. How many moles of oxygen would there be? So uh, our given here is 50 milliliters or the volume of CO2, and we're asked to find um, the number of oxygen, the, the moles of oxygen atoms. So we don't need to convert our find into anything else because it's in moles. So this is where we're going to end here with moles of find. So let's map out our plan. We're given our volume of CO2. We're going to convert it to moles of CO2, amount of given to moles of given. And to do that, we'll use the mole map. Now, if you look on the mole map and you start at the volume of a gas at STP, you will see that um, the conversion factor that we use in that case is one mole of the gas is equal to 22.4 liters. Now that we have the moles of CO2, um, now we can convert that to moles of oxygen, moles of our fine, and for that we would use the mole ratio. So if you look at the chemical formula, if you have one CO2 molecule, that will be two oxygen atoms. So one mole of CO2 will be two moles of oxygen atoms. And once again, I'm just using the subscripts there. All right, now that we have our plan and we know our conversion factors, we're going to go ahead and start working this out using dimensional analysis. But before we do that, let's take a look at our given again. The amount of our given is in milliliters. But if you look at the conversion factor that we use to go from volume to moles, you notice that it's one mole is equal to 22.4 liters, not 22.4 milliliters. So we have to convert this milliliters to liters. And we do that by dividing by 1,000. So when we divide the 50 milliliters by 1,000, we get 0 0.0500 liters as our volume of CO2. So let's now go ahead and convert it. So we're going from volume of CO2 to moles of CO2. I take my 0 0.0500 liters of CO2, put it over 1, and I multiply it by my conversion factor. Since I have liters in the numerator of my given and um, I want to get rid of it in the denominator or the bottom part of the conversion factor fraction, I'm going to write my 22.4 liters, which I get again from my conversion factor. And then the one mole will go on top and I get 0 0.00223 moles of CO2. Now I can convert from the moles of CO2 to moles of oxygen using my mole ratio. So I take my 0 0.00223 moles of CO2 put it over one to make it into a fraction. The second fraction comes from my conversion factor. I put the one mole of CO2 on the bottom so they cancel out and the two moles of oxygen on top. And that gives me 0 0.00446 moles of oxygen. 
Okay, let's look at the last example here. All right, and this example says how many iron atoms are in one gram of Fe2O3 or iron, iron um, three oxide. So to solve this problem, um, Let's take a look at our visual aid. Let's say you had a gram, you weighed out a gram of Fe2O3, and then you removed all of the iron atoms from that one gram sample and counted them. How many iron atoms would you have? So in this case, our given is one gram of iron oxide, and we're looking for the number of iron atoms. So we're going from amount of given all the way to amount of fine. So we gotta do everything here. So our first step is to go from mass um, our mass of iron oxide to the moles of iron oxide. And again, we would use the mole map for that, specifically the molar mass of iron oxide, which is 159.7 grams. Then we would go from moles of iron oxide to moles of iron. And for that, we would use the mole ratio. And we can see from the chemical formula that one mole of iron oxide has two moles of iron because iron has a subscript of two. Then we would go from moles of iron to number of iron atoms. Now we're going back to the mole map. So for that, if you start off with moles and you want to get to the number of particles, you would see you have to go through Avogadro's number or 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, so let's get started in solving. So we're going to convert from mass of iron oxide to moles of iron oxide. Here's our dimensional analysis setup. Then we're going to convert from moles of iron oxide to moles of iron using the mole ratio. And here's our dimensional analysis setup. So we take this, the moles of iron oxide we got here, and we use it in that second step to convert to moles of iron. And then the last step is to convert from moles of iron to number of iron atoms using one mole is equal to Avogadro's number. Here's our dimensional analysis setup. And then this is our final answer. So if you were to count the number of iron atoms in that one gram sample, you would get 7.54 times 10 to the 21 iron atoms. That's a lot of atoms, right? Okay, so I'm hoping that after we sort of broke the process, the steps down a little bit more, and then we took time to go over conceptually what each question is, we're asking are asking you to do I'm hoping it's a bit more clear now your next steps here are to actually try the practice problem in unit 7 day 2 and I will post an answer key with the steps done out step by step as opposed to just on one line and that should be helpful um, for you so hopefully at this point you are saying either we love stoichiometry or we like stoichiometry or we're sort of okay with it or at least you don't hate it um, because stoichiometry is something that you are going to be doing um, pretty much for the rest of the year. In the last couple of units, we'll be doing stoichiometry. So I want to make sure that you feel comfortable with it. All right, that's it for this video. Have a quality day.